Oh, oh, I, wow. Um, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's me, Norman Reed, and today we have a video of the Salehi Benberry Croc in the Kawada colorway. <laughs> Okay, so as from the intro and from the b-roll, we have the Kawada colorway in hand right now. I really enjoy this particular shoe. It's very unique. It gives me that alien vibe. But before I dive too, too deep into the specifics of this particular shoe, I just want to break this video down into three sections. We're going to talk about the style of the shoe. We're going to talk about the fit of the shoe. And I'm going to talk about, is the shoe worth it to buy right now? So. Let's just dive right into this video. So let's talk about the style of the shoe. As you can see, it has nice little um, waves, a wave pattern on this particular shoe. One thing I really enjoy about the shoe is that the inspiration or the design came from three fingerprints overlaid, I believe. And this, these are the fingerprints from Salehi Benberry himself, so which is very, very unique. And I really enjoy like this very non-traditional um, design. It's basically a fingerprint shoe if you really think about it. So just like pretty mind-boggling. However, I just want to compare this particular silhouette to a traditional croc. So these are my beater crocs. I picked these up for maybe $25. Not even pick $25. I got these as a gift from my sister. Shout out to my sister. So I, a nice orange croc. So we have this nice orange croc right here, right? Basically, if you were to pick this up for retail, maybe like $20, depending on the discount or, or sale that's going on right now. And this shoe, which is like 85, and I'm gonna tell you the reason why it's priced as 85. Obviously, it is a collaboration between, oh, obviously it's a collaboration with a, um, a designer. He's a well-known designer. He worked with like um, Versace, worked with New Balance, a very well-known designer within the streetwear, footwear, um, spaces so this is his design the major difference within from this to this is that he i guess literally put his fingerprints on this particular shoe the designs on the bottom it goes away from the i guess like the hair and bone traction it goes away from having the croc logo on the middle of the shoe with the sizing that's gone now we have the fingerprint we have a nice like rugged durable rubber on the forefoot and the heel so those are the two sections of your foot that gets the most wear when you walk so obviously it needs more rubber on the forefoot and more rubber on the midfoot or not midfoot on the heel and it's soft the rubber on the the midfoot so that's one particular thing or one reason why the shoe just priced just a little bit more um also we don't have a normal strap the normal strap on the regular croc is the same foam as you can see as like the actual shoe so nothing really different from the material used from the outsole mid outsole um midsole midfoot whatever is all the same material from this particular og croc however with this particular model the difference is that it's like i guess like this particular feeling is like a nice leather like it feels like leather for some reason but i'm pretty sure it is not leather it's just like a nice um texturized rubber it has velcro on the shoe so if you need to adjust um the fit of the shoe you can do that i recommend doing that if you want more of a snug fit but yeah that's just me however you can wear them in the casual mode or you can wear these in sport mode i recommend going in the sport mode um variant specifically is because like it gives more of a cleaner look rather than like walking around like this just just me though However, I wouldn't wear this shoe in this variant. I will wear the original croc like that because like it's very seamless. It's not like adding any bulk to the shoe. And also if you're wearing a sport, sport mode, like, I mean, it's casual. It's not, it's not adding anything to it. So that's just like one big difference between like the styling aspect of these particular shoes. Like I will wear this one in the sport mode variant and I'll just wear this one as just like, put my, like basically just sliding my feet in and just going about my day. So that's basically the the major differences between the recent Slahi Benberry Croc versus a traditional Croc. So we talked about the style of the shoe. Now we're gonna talk about the fit. So I actually picked up two pairs of the shoe, a size 10 and a size 9. I actually won um the raffle of the 
I guess the the, the release of the shoot, the quarter shoot. I picked those, picked these up in a size 10 because I was like, all right. I usually wear like a size 10 in like um, bigger shoes, like a Jordan 11. I wear a size 10 in um, some Dunks. I wear a size 10 in, and basically I I've worn shoes that are a size 10. However, these shoes are very, I guess like wider in the the toe box area. So with that being said, like when I picked these up and I tried them on, the size 10 wasn't feeling like a normal size 10. In the, that I was accustomed to. There was a lot more play within the shoe and my foot was not like all the way secure within it. However, it still was wearable if I decided to just like double sock or if I, I guess, adjust the strap to like push my, the back of my foot, my Achilles area towards the front so like my foot is more secured. But then again, I don't wanna be like, it, I know it's a clog, but like I don't wanna be like, doing that motion when I walk. I just wanted like a normal, like walking pattern. So with that being said, I picked up a size, picked up a size nine in them. And these fit perfectly within how I like my, I guess like streetwear slip on type of um, my shoe. So these size nines fit perfectly on my person or on my foot. Um, I've seen some videos where certain, um, I guess like influencers slash content creators recommend going a full size down or for me i would say go true to size unless you can find them in the store then you can try like your if, if this is a size 10 see if it fits if it's too too big go down a full size and see how that fits then the one thing i don't like about this particular model is like there's no half sizes so it's like if there's a like if there's a size nine and a half of this particular shoe i'll buy those in a heartbeat that's a size that helps me throughout all like aspects of shoes like adidas jordans um even designer shoes like nine and a half is my go-to size some shoe companies might be a little their nine and a half might be a little bit big their nine and a half might be a little bit small but overall the nine and a half is like that's like my sweet spot i can go lower which my normal size was a size nine or i can go a little bit higher so nine and a half is not perfect sweet spot for me but if they can do half sizes between crocs literally just take my money at that point but they did not so i just went from a size nine and this particular um size did the job for me so i recommend once again if you were a size nine get that size nine however if you can find them in store try them on then if they size nine is not giving you what you supposed what it's supposed to give then go to like a size 10 see how that feels and if the only if the only size in stock is a size 10 you might have to double sock and call it a day so we talked about the style we talked about the fit now i want to talk to you about is the shoe worth it in 2022 or just worth it right now within this i don't know streetwear culture economy so in my personal opinion i would say these shoes are, are worth it if you're the right person for the shoe if you could wear the shoe very loosely not caring about like getting them dirty not caring about like are they gonna like wear down on you then this is the croc for you again as i mentioned within the style of the shoe there is a lot of extra rubber on the forefoot and on the heel so those are the two parts of the shoe that get the most wear so for, for example for me i wore the shoe throughout my college my four years of, of university right my forefoot and my heel are the most worn out parts of my croc as you can see right here forefoot basically sanded down not forefoot the heel is basically sanded down the forefoot almost the same exact thing so if i were to wear these for my four years at university most likely it would have been the same exact thing same exact thing however there would probably be more um traction or more tread on the shoe rather than my og cross so with that being said if you're going to put a lot of miles and you're going to not really care about um your shoe in a sense of like not caring if they get dirty then this particular shoe is right up your alley however you can't wear the shoe all year round like you're not wearing these in the like on the east coast blizzard like you're not doing it to yourself because like your toes are gonna freeze like you gotta wear the tims you gotta back up the tims so i recommend buying these shoes now since there's like this particular colorway is not reselling for a lot so you can pick these up for cheap and save them for the spring and or summertime not even save them for the fall because like that's when people really be putting that stuff on so yeah this shoe is very worth it in the sense like if you want a nice rugged shoe it's kind of hard to justify like 85 dollars for for a croc however 
with the durability, the material, I guess like the in engineering behind the shoe, just like the thought process of like Salehi putting his literally, literally his fingerprints on the shoe, then it's like, all right, the quality is there, the fit is there, the durability is there. So it's like, it, it justifies the price. However, I would say if you can find these for retail or under retail, definitely pick them up. So we made it to the end of this video. Um, I had to take off my blue sweater because it was a little bit too toasty in my room. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Roll to 300 subscribers before the end of the year. I'm pretty sure that's a little bit far-fetched, but anything is possible. I'm gonna try to upload more frequently. So instead of like once a month, or once every four weeks, or once every, whatever, I'm gonna try to post maybe two times within a month, maybe three times within a month, depending on, on my free time. And depending if I have more, I guess, like creative, like psh, explosions to document on my channel. But with that being said, thank you for sticking with me and catch you in the next video. Bye.